I'm Courtney and I hope you guys are doing so very well. Now it has been almost a month since a video from me has come out and I do apologize. I have been extremely busy with Patreon but also I've been very busy with a few personal things that are behind the scenes and that has taken me away from doing public videos. Um, but I am, I hope the calm, the storm has passed and I've got some calm and I can get myself back to doing YouTube videos as well as my Patreon things. Um, I have a few videos in store for you guys but I did promise you a video on the sewing book because I know you guys have been waiting so very patiently. Um, so today's video we're going to, re I'm going to play in my journal and show you different ways to use your photographs. I'm going to just do some mark making and some play. I probably will speed it up so it's not a stupidly long video and it doesn't take me hours and hours and hours to upload. Um, if you hear some noises in the background, my washing machine is doing a load of laundry. I am still a mama and a housewife, um, but that thing is possessed at the moment, so it does sound like a herd of elephants are being washed inside it. So I do apologize if there's some crazy noises. But, and I also have some construction outside as well. So apologies for all the crazy noises, but if I didn't do it now, and I think the recycling guy has just rocked up as well with the bin. So we're having a very, very eventful Monday morning. So I have printed out some of my photographs to play with in my journal. And I will show you guys um, a cutaway of how I print in iPhoto. Um, these are some of the photos that I have taken of my little teacup humans. Um, I do pose them sometimes if I have a certain idea in mind. Um, otherwise, my kids have had off camera in their face since they were born. They are very, very easy and very, very um, calm when a photo has been asked of them. They will stop, drop and selfie for me almost instantly. Um, and I did do a photo shoot with them because I had an idea that had been bubbling around in my head and I thought it would be cool to show you guys. Um, if your kids are not really willing and <laughs> to do this sort of thing, um, maybe you can make it into a game. That's kind of how I do things. I told them what I want them, wanted them to do and they did it for me. My little humans are very good at that sort of thing. So I have some ideas. Um, like this little picture of Lily, I want to create a creature in her hand, that sort of thing. Altering photos is one of my favorite things to do and I do love to do it manually. Um, I'm going to use some markers. I'm going to show you different ways that I enjoy altering photographs. So hopefully this video isn't like a hundred thousand hours because I get carried away. Or I might cut it down into portions. So each section I might do part one, part two, part three and upload them over the course of the week just to save my 20 minute videos here in Australia takes me 12 hours to upload. So that's what I'm working with and that's why I try to keep them as short as I possibly can. So I do try and jam as much information as I possibly can into a video so you guys don't feel like you've been jibbed a video and I feel good in myself knowing that I've given you as much as I can in the time constraints that I've got. Otherwise my poor computer would be uploading for days on end. Um, so pictures here of Elijah. So he's got his hand out as well. So a little creature. Um, he's got a little, he's, <laughs> he put his hand a little bit too close to his ear. So I'm not quite sure how I'm going to get a creature in there. Um, this one, he's looking up. So I'm thinking about putting things around his head. So be creative with your photographs. Um, these sorts of things. I do love to print a lot of my photos in black and white because it means the things that you're adding, the things that you're adding to your photographs become your focal point. So your colored elements are things that you've created yourself and they draw your eye to it. And it, and it kind of means like the imaginary world that you're creating around them is what's full of color. Like reality can sometimes be black and white, but the imaginary can be bursting with color. And I love thinking about that. So these are some of the pictures my little humans did for me. And I thought when I was doing the pictures of Boo in the roller skates and things down here, I thought about putting this at one pet one at the top of the page and this at the bottom and then creating her body in like drawing her body. Oh my God, it sounds like chaos outside my front door. So drawing her body bits in between so that I may get time to do that on camera or that will be another set, another part. So that sort of thing, you can create worlds around them. So just think about things differently. Think, what can I add to this? What will look awesome with this? You know, what can I create around these photographs? I mean, 
Yes, these are posed photos, but later on I will probably do photos that are not so posed so you can see how I alter um, normal photos, not Courtney-driven photos. I don't know what happened here. These photos have been printed for ages. So that is the kind of intro to it so you will see me work in here and i will do a voiceover so i will tell you what i'm doing um it's the easiest way for me to get as much as i can when i fast forward it and make it speed um i give you guys a voiceover so you know exactly what i'm doing without it being a hugely long video so that is what we're going to do today. I hope you've got your books out. I hope you've got your photos. Even if you don't, you can watch and still play in your journal so that I can give you guys ideas. And we will see how these pages evolve. I will be working on the same pages that I've already pre-prepped so you can see what sort of things I add to these pages so that they can become one step closer. Haha, <laughs> one step closer to being complete. So that's basically what I do. I work on multiple pages um, or sometimes I will favor a page and get it to completion, but I'm not sure how that will go. The creative process is one that is very hard to track, um, but hopefully you guys will enjoy this video. I have a whole heap of videos coming up because of my personal situation in the background. It took me away from making public videos and I had to get my Patreon content out and they get two videos a week from me every week. So it meant that I was stretched really thin just getting those two done. But I'm feeling more in control and more organized and ready to roar. So I have this video, I have a uh, painting video coming up. I'm painting a beautiful handmade Mid um, Midori cover by an Aussie artist. You'll see that soon. I'm going to do some A5 dashboards in a collage form. I'm also going to work on some collage tip-ins for you guys. I'm going to show you guys ways to add cool things. These are also going to be in my sewing book because I think they are little artworks on their own and I did use um, collage tip-ins in my original sewing book. Um, so I'm going to show you guys ways to turn tip-ins into little works of art. You guys know that tip-ins are my favorite thing ever. And if I, when in doubt, tip it in. So those videos are coming to my channel. So this little channel will get re-bursted with some creative content. And I hope you guys keep coming back and enjoy. So let's get this video going and let's get this sewing book getting some craftiness, not some craftiness, some artiness put into it. So thank you guys and enjoy. Bye. Okay, let's get going. First of all, I'm going to cut out that picture of Boo. I'm going to cut out the excess space and just leave her head. And then I'm going to pop that down the bottom of my page. And then we are going to grab a Sharpie pen or a black pen and draw on the photograph but first I am also going to pop the Copic marker in fluoro pink and give her my signature cheeks like I like to do it is just something I really love looking at it makes it fun and playful so I always pop on a cheek pop so now we're gonna give her some antlers at first I was gonna try and draw them with my pencil but I gave up so I just went in with Sharpie go big or go home so I am just adding on to the photo and making it look like the antlers are part of her. So one way to incorporate photographs into your journal is to add things to them and add them in a way that it looks like they were always there before. I do extend her hairline into the antlers so it looks like they're not just um, plopped on there, they're part of the photograph and that is one of the things that I love doing and incorporating your photographs on top of your collage elements. I'm drawing right over the top of some of those collage elements and it's all those lines instantly integrated into one piece and I also add some background color a little later on so everything comes together as one. This little exercise is a great thing to do if you don't have any pose photographs but you do have shots of your kids, your grandkids or even just magazine clippings of kids if you don't want to do this with a kids photo of yours. 
then totally use a magazine face and turn it into something completely different. Um, I love using my kids' faces because it's a way to incorporate our lives into my art. My sewing book journal was where I always said where art and life collide and the life bit is always a use of my photographs in our everyday life pictures of my kids, all that sort of thing. So I like to turn my family members into actual pieces of my art. Now here I'm just using a collage sheet of mine and I'm cutting out some ears, just some basic little ear shapes and I'm just fixing it up to make sure it all fits. The first ear went on quite well, but the second ear was playing hard to get. So I was just trying to get just the right little angle um, I probably should have moved the antler a bit, but it's all right. In the scheme of things, you wouldn't even notice. So a cute way to add and create characters is give them ears and antlers and noses, all that sort of thing. And I'm just sort of drawing over the top of the ears so that it looks like the hairline is actually over the ears. And I'm just outlining that so it becomes one. That's a way to sort of integrate things is outlining things as well. I do really love to outline my collage elements. I do it a lot in my normal journal and so outlining is good. So now we're going to add some paint to those antlers and put on some little whimsy flowers. So it looks like she's got cherry blossom antlers. Um, my red flowers popped up heaps in my last sewing book and they will appear heaps in this sewing book because they're so much fun and so easy to do. A little bit of red and white paint and some um, marker and you're good. So once that dries, I do just outline the flowers with a little bit of pen. This is a Letra Set Aqua Marker and I'm pretty sure they've been bought out by Pro Marker now so it might have been rebranded. But this is just a yellow one and this is me integrating some background into the entire page so that it looks like it is one piece of art. So we've gone from having bits of collage on the page and now we're slowly, slowly making a scene and making the page more cohesive. And I will go back over night time and do doodling and things. But the main element here is Boo. And I'm just giving little whites of the ears with some um, Sharpie marker. And I think I go back in with normal white paint because the Sharpie marker wasn't quite cutting it on the day. Like I said, outlining those little bits of flower, just scribbly lines, nothing very refined. My sewing book journal was a lot of sketchy lines and I loved the way it looked. And I do a little bit more refined drawing in my Patreon collage sheets, but in my sewing journal, this is purely a place of play and experimentation and all that sort of thing. Now, I do love a good chunk of neon pink and you guys know that I love it so, so of course I'm gonna add some big chunks of neon pink to the background. I probably will come back in and uh, doodling and words and things. I may or may not do it on camera, um, but that's how my pages slowly get built. I have a focal point and then I slowly do mark making, pattern making, uh, text, all that sort of thing. So we shall see where this page goes. I decided I just wanted the legs in the picture, so I covered up the girl and left the legs and I'll probably work with those at a later date. Like I said, I do not normally finish pages. I work on several at a time. So moving on to a little Elijah, we are going to add a creature to his hand. So adding things again, adding collage elements to your photographs can make them, you know, into works of art and make them look like little scenes that you create. Um, actually, Elijah picked the little creature that is on his hand. I gave him a whole heap of choices and he picked the one that you're going to see. And this is a way that I can tie in or you guys can tie in your scrap monsters like i said in my previous video all my lessons or my journal with me's or my projects all of these can somehow tie back to your sewing book you can always reuse your work you can always reuse old images and the scrap monsters are a great thing to use as part you know bits and pieces of your imaginary world that you're creating on this page and it was a scrap monster that elijah actually picked so projects that you've done in the past can be reworked and revamped and given life again if you've got a whole heap of spare scrap monsters lying around. 
you know, put them in the palm of your kids' hands. Put them in your hand if you want to create, you know, a selfie with your hand out. There's, you know, so many ways that you can use your work again and again in new and different ways. So I was kind of happy that he picked a scrap monster because it, you know, gave me the idea that I can tell you guys always reuse your work you can always reuse everything you do in new and exciting ways and it'll never look the same as what you did so i actually have scanned my scrap monsters and had them in collage sheets so this is not the original the original is way too big um, so i gave him versions smaller versions of things so it didn't look like he was trying to carry a giant in the palm of his hand but this is a way to incorporate photographs as well it is not something that I've done in my previous art journal, but I do really love the whole idea of creating an imaginary world with um, creatures and kooky nook dwellers. I mean, I use nook dwellers so much in my last journal and they will make a comeback. So this is just a way you could use your nook dwellers if you've done any or use little quirky creatures you've created. I've also popped on some red Copic marker onto Elijah's cheek. I almost didn't do it, but I'm glad I did. So this is some neon pink fountain pen ink and I love just painting shapes and playing. Um, using a paintbrush means you're a lot freer with your lines, there's not that much control and I do really like how they look. And I was just doing some little lines out from the creature so it looks like magical stardust. Could maybe not be magical stardust and it may get covered up at a later date because I wasn't quite sure if I liked it after I did it. Um, so that is one way to use your sheets as well. Your photographs, you can create little scenes with them. I do extend his shoulder because his shoulder got cut off. So you can recreate body parts as well. And armed with a Sharpie, next we're moving on to turning Boo into a superhero bear. Um, I wasn't quite happy with how it, fin how it turned out in the end, but it was a really fun process to do. So like I said, armed with a Sharpie, I'm giving her a mask and then it goes on from there. You can turn your kids into superhero characters as well. Turn yourself, turn anything into a superhero with a mask and a cape. So enjoy this part, it's very self-explanatory. But these are the three ways that I'm going to show you today on how to integrate photographs into your journals. They may, some of them may, like this one, may not look like it's very integrated yet, but give me time and I will show you how we pull that page together. Um, I just had so much fun turning Boo into a superhero, so I just went with it. Um, and this video was already 20 minutes long, so we are going to just turn her into a cat superhero. And then I will see you guys next month for another video. Or maybe this whole video might have reignited my love for my sewing journal. And there might be some videos a little bit quicker than that. So it's amazing what you can do with a Sharpie pen. You can basically recreate an entire thing. I had a blast and Lily saw this as I was doing it and she giggled her head off. So it's a great way to turn your kids into completely different things but I really enjoyed it. I did make her a bit chunkier than I wanted, but so be it. So enjoy the rest of this video and I will talk to you guys very, very soon. If I think there's anything else you need to know, um, I will pop back in. But for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you very soon. Bye. Because I was on a time constraint and I needed to go pick up the kids from school, I did grab my India ink 
to quickly cover some ground instead of sharpie it is a great quick way of covering a lot of ground in a small amount of time but it did mean that I was a bit heavy handed and did make her a little bit chunkier even more which I wasn't too happy about but you live and you learn I can probably alter it again later on to change her but we shall see I did add some arms with the white sharpie pen and I also regret that because my sharpie pen is playing up as you can see it was leaking and I just used some little dashes to create that illusion of textured fur nothing too fancy but I really had a blast and I hope you enjoyed this and I want to see your photographs in your sewing book journals remember hashtag Raven book art and I'll talk to you guys very soon bye